Hello world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to RoboThought Zero to Hero series. C, C++ coding in Arduino, UNO, Arduino Mega, Arduino Nano, whichever the board you want to use. All right, guys, we are on lesson number 41. In this lesson, I am going to talk about pulse width modulation, which is also called PWM. All right, so PWM as I said, it's a pulse width modulation. It's basically a method of controlling the average voltage in your Arduino pins, right? There are digital pins and analog pins. So I'm going to show you practically what, how the PWM works. So it's nothing but it's a stream of voltage pulses, a pulse of stream, or you can call it as a train, right? Up and down like a square brackets and uh, for for the for, for you guys some of you guys it might be the first time you are hearing about pwm pulse with modulation so i am trying to uh, you know explain with some expressions and some pictures how it looks and how to measure a pwm stuff so basically uh, this particular voltage pulses that reduces the electric power supplied by the electric signal okay it reduces and also it increases as we design in our C code. Okay, the effective voltage is controlled by the width of individual pulses in a stream of voltage pulses of a PWM signal output. Okay, so let me show you with an example. Uh, say for example, if, if you take a look at this particular picture, the pulse PWM, so there is a zero duty cycle, which is analog right. When you use the analog right, which is equal to zero if you define it as a zero in the previous lessons i showed you what is a digital write and uh, stuff like that so similar way i am also going to talk about analog write in the upcoming lessons for now you can just grasp this picture how the pwm uh, uh, modulation works right so i'll try to explain as best as possible but you know uh, it all depends upon what kind of exercise we are going to do so in this lesson I'll also show you practically by connecting a LED and a resistor with one of the digital pins, which is also PWM pins. There are limited PWM pins in Arduino uh, UNO, right? So you may use the circuit which I showed you in the previous video or the previous video. Last three videos we did single LED, double LED and multiple LED. So you can just pick up one LED with a resistor and the long leg of a resistor can be connected to pin number say one of the pwm pin is pin number six you can connect it to six and the short led can go to the ground pin of arduino all right so the common use of pwm pins including controlling leds and dc motors when you get into robotics how do you control the dc motors it's the pwm that's the way we control the dc motors the PWM in LED controls the frequency of the light. Okay, it means the LED will be on and off at a frequency detectable by our eyes with our human eyes, what we can visualize, right? Uh, so the PWM in DC motors acts like a pulse train like this in the di diagram. What I showed you, what you're seeing right now behind me, it, it works like a pulse train of a DC signal the DC motors receive a high or a low electrical power input based on the width of the PWM pulses. If the width is more, the power is more and it goes up and goes down, right? So we can also use the PWM of voltage regulations or audio signal generation devices like, you know, any, any pop, uh, DC motor driven uh, hydraulic uh, uh, equipments or even a servo motor, right? So you can cut, control multiple uh, devices uh, using the pulse width modulation. So each duty cycle, what you see here in the picture behind me uh, of a PWM wave is defined as the ratio of pulse width to the total width of the signal. All right. The, this particular image also displays the wave at a different duty cycles. You can see the example one, two, three, four, five from the top to bottom, right? So we can control the effective voltage of the DC motor in Arduino by regulating the PWM duty cycle. Uh, in Arduino UNO board, basically it, consi it, it, it basically consists of 14 digital input and output pins. Whereas the pin number 11, 10, 9, 6, 5 and 3 are specific to PWM pins only. All right. You can of course use it as a digital pin, but these are 
the uh, uh, you know the architecture the way the arduino architecture has been designed is these particular pins pin number 11 10 9 6 5 and 3 are specific to pwm if you take out or your arduino and see uh, let me just uh, uh, show it to you so for example here all this pin which has got a squiggly mark right like pin number 11 and 6 has got a squiggly mark so the that squiggly marks are basically the pwm pins it's very easy to recognize right so you you can easily take a look at it say for example here in pin number 11 has got a squiggly mark and you can you you can easily identify and say that ho oh, okay this is a pwm pin you can immediately hook it up all right so <coughs> now how do we make it to work the pin mode function the digital read function and the digital write function which i spoke about in the earlier lessons in this particular series digital write and pin mode with with a curvy bracket at the both the end right so pin mode is pin in lower case and m starts with the upper case m o d e as soon as you type pin mode the color in arduino id changes so so that is one of the function so these functions control the operation of non pwm pins okay apart from 11 10 9 6 5 and 3 these are digital uh, these are pwm pins also and di digital pins but if you use pin mode digital write and digital read these functions control the operation of non pwm pins apart from pin number 11 10 9 6 5 and 3 okay the pin mode function is used to declare the specific pin as a input or an output okay the digital read that is the function we will be using is used to read the high or low state of a pin you give it as a high in upper case in your c code or low in upper case in the c code that is the state of the pin it will change high means on and low means off okay so we need to use analog write pin not digital write neither digital read neither pin mode neither digital read okay we need to use the analog read function this is a new function i am going to teach you uh, this will basically set the duty cycle of the pwm pulse with modulation to control the led or a dc motor or a servo motor right so analog write function writes a pwm value or analog value to that particular pin which you are assigning we can light an led with a you know by controlling the brightness or you can connect a dc motor to increase and decrease the speed right with the help of analog write it is also used to drive a motor at a variable speed you can declare a variable at the beginning and start controlling it so there are multiple ways to do it so when a analog write function is called within your arduino sketch in your code blocks a stable regulated wave of a particular duty cycle is generated by the specified pwm pin until the next analog write is called on the same pin within either in the loop or in the setup function right so the pwm pins are present on every arduino board the frequency can also vary from some pwm pins present on the particular board as well so what is the difference between analog read and analog write you might have this question so analog read is used to read the analog value while analog write function is used to write the pwm function pwm value right you can define a value the value of analog read will range from 0 to 1023 keep this numbers in mind 0 to 1023 there is a preset value while the analog write ranges between 0 to 255 so that's where you control your pwm 0 to 255 it's basically 256 bits but we start from 0 and ends with 255 so it's basically 256 but when you code when you write your c code it's basically 255 that is the maximum uh pwm output you get so let me just do some basic coding and try to explain how this pwm works so go ahead and build a circuit using a single led like the way i showed you here uh you you may you may basically you know uh, uh, uh connect one resistor one led uh and uh, the long leg of the led is connected to resistor which goes to pin number 6 and the short leg connects to the ground pin all right so let's let's do some uh, coding and i'll i'll try to explain you with some example code how to control the pwm all right guys so let's do some interesting coding here i am on my arduino ide and let me open up 
let's say void setup this is going to be your setup function with open and close parenthesis and then you need to open a curly bracket come inside the curly bracket let's define our pin mode like this pin mode i am going to define the pwm pin 6 pwm pin 6 and output we need a output so basically the declared pin must be among the pwm pin only that is a 6 11 3 which i told you right and now let's come out of this control statement we'll move to void loop now void loop like this and then a curly bracket now we need to do use a analog write function for the pwm activation analog analog write like this analog right now say pin number six i want the maximum power that is what 0 to 255 so let us say 255 is the maximum so the brightness increases as the value increases this is how it works let's put a semicolon i am forgetting semicolon guys this is very important see i forgot a semicolon here so these are very very important or else your code will not execute now let's delay say delay for 1000 milliseconds like this and then analog analog right analog right oops what is happening analog right analog write in pin number six i am writing in pin number six to say 180 now i'll control the brightness level to say 180 i'm just putting some number anything between 0 to 255 guys keep a note of it 180 now delay to 1000 milliseconds again okay after after delaying for 1000 milliseconds and then again analog right we will send the signal again the pwm signal to pin number six and then we'll reduce it to 80 further down put a semicolon and then we will delay the function the delay to 1000 milliseconds 1000 milliseconds and then again analog right again we will try to reduce the voltage that is from in pin number 6 to 20 right here the brightness will decreases as the value decreases right and then delay for 1000 milliseconds again all right oops i missed a semicolon let's put a semicolon here and now what we can do i think that's pretty much let's let's run this code and see the output what we get let me compile code is getting compiled i don't see any error that's good so no syntax error let me upload it's uploading with a happy little done uploading there you go i can see my led brightness going up and down can you see this guys let me just share it all right can you see this led how bright it is and it's going down the brightness reduces and it goes up it again reduces with thousand milliseconds uh, uh, delay and it goes up again can you see that it becomes bright and the brightness comes down so this is how you can control your pwm 
so guys it's it's a pretty uh, straight forward uh, lessons if if you understand the concept of pwm how it works you can play around a lot by controlling servo motors and dc motors and stuff but it's very important you understand uh, this particular concept that is the pulse width modulation duty cycle how it is maybe in in upcoming one of the lessons i'll teach you how, uh, some of the formulas how to calculate the speed of a dc motor <coughs> dc motor or the speed of a servo motor depending upon 180 degree servo you are using or a 360 degree servo you are using what kind of formulas to apply to control specific speed right so i'll i'll teach you that in a upcoming lesson this is a very basic one for a non technical folks who are beginners who are getting into the world of coding and robotics for the first time in life so all right guys do leave a comment below and uh, do give me a thumbs up if you have any questions i'll be glad to answer that in the comment section i'll get back to you soon bye bye